Hello, my name is Lee Rebecca and today I'm going to be doing a video on all the advice I wish I knew before year 12 and just advice for all of you GCSE students and Jen Primrose Kitten has asked me to make this video like in GCSEs I literally watched every single one of her science videos like 10,000 times over and I ended up doing really well. A level I did biology, chemistry and maths and I have a medicine offer so you know life is good and I just need to give you some advice because year 12 is something different and especially not having had the GCSE exam period where you have like 10,000 million exams and like you know that art exam is like 10 hours long so yeah you've got a big storm coming but you know with this advice you can do well you can have that transition and just have the best opportunities once you go into sixth form really excitingly primrose kitten has given me a discount code for you all so primrose kitten has made online courses for a level chemistry psychology biology and maths and they're just full of loads of multiple choice questions that you can really get to grips with and that you'll be able to navigate all of the multiple choice questions that you have in A-levels because multiple choice questions can actually be way harder than you think. She also has a course for the summer into A-level maths so that's got loads of different questions that you can use to just ease yourself in and not feel that jump too much. So first of all, congratulations on your GCSEs. Even though the government made an absolute mess of it all, hopefully you've got results that you are proud of, that you know thought that you could get. And if not, the exams that are coming, if you want to sit them, you can do well, you can do it. And it won't hold you back. If anything, you'll be better than the people that have just like glided through, gotten like eights and nines when they hadn't actually done anything for months. So if you have to sit the exams, don't worry and you won't be too far behind in sixth form. So my first tip is to make sure that you are passionate about your subjects and that you've chosen so correctly. You need to be putting in the thoughts, okay? You need to be like so serious about this because your subjects are make and break. As much as you don't really want to hear this, you need to be thinking about your future, you know? Because say you want to be an astrophysicist but you're taking like, you know, not really subjects that are related to that, it's going to be a lot harder for you to apply and you might not even be able to apply to some universities so it's a bit scary to think about your future now but try to research any courses that you're interested in any careers that you're interested in and just see what kind of subjects they would like so for me i did biology chemistry and maths which is quite the classic combo but for medicine you can take psychology or some other subjects and you know it's not that you have to do exactly what everyone else is saying one thing that i didn't know was that on results day people chose four subjects and then they did like all of the subjects in the beginning of the year but then if they didn't like one of them which most likely you won't um <laughs> then they just changed the subjects and like dropped one so that is so clever like my friend did art and then she ended up dropping art and then just kept on like all of her science uh, a levels but yeah like with four a levels like uh, on twitter you always see people like oh i did like 12 gcse so i can do like four a level a levels are they're intense like you, it's it's off the charts of anything you've ever experienced as someone that got like eight a stars two a's at gcse let's just say it's uh it's very different it's very intense it's very content heavy so a levels are something to be aware of you need to be on it just because you got a high grade in a subject doesn't mean that you should do it you know so maybe you did really well in maths but you actually don't like it that much maybe you don't take it because you will need that intrinsic motivation to push you through to make you study to make you go to the teacher when you don't understand things you won't want to be doing it like it is such a drag to do a levels but you need to have that motivation that passion for your subjects that it'll be easier when you're revising so one thing people love to say is that the jump from year 11 to year 12 is like so crazy whoa like yeah it's crazy it's crazy but in reality the real jump is from year 12 to year 13 because that summer you've got to apply you've got to like do so much and the content from year 12 to year 13 is mammoth it is insane so if you're scared about going into year 12 now don't worry too much because you know year 12 to year 13 will be that's when the issue is like not now and schools really try to ease you in you know the first test i got in biology i got 100 you know so it just shows that you know they're trying to ease you in and 
it's more gradual and with the grading in A-levels you know everyone's used to nines and eights and sevens whatever but in A-levels you will be humbled like you will be humbled for me I didn't really get bad grades in anything um, except German but you know we don't really talk about that <laughs> in sciences I was used to getting above a certain percentage I was used to being the highest in the class I was used to etc 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 but in a levels you will be getting some d's and some c's and perhaps even u's and it's very shocking it's very shocking but you just have to understand that an a star at gcse is the equivalent of a u so it's it's off the scales like a d is a pass at a level so that just shows how difficult it is but at the end of the day you will be able to do it you'll be able to do well so on results day i had a lot of students messaging me saying oh i got this really bad grade like my life is over like what like what university am i going to go to like this is the end and i just want to emphasize that it is not the end at a level it's really hard work that's going to get you through i know people that got into sixth form with like below the entry requirements and they ended up getting like a stars you know because it's like it's your work ethic and the amount of time that you're willing to put in, you know? And it is so, so easy to be like, oh yeah, I've got my A stars, I've got my nines, I've got my eights, like, come on A levels, like, let's go, let's go. But it is actually very, very humbling. You'll be humbled, you'll be shook, but it will all pass and eventually you'll be getting the grades that you want and you'll have your revision techniques down you'll be knowing what you're doing in your lessons how you organize yourself so kind of expect for there to be a dip in your grades and don't feel like you're held back by your gcse's especially in these times of like the teacher assessed grades and the center assessed grades it wasn't your fault for the grades that you've gotten especially you know all the poc uh, students out there it's not really a true reflection of you and your work ethic like you gcc students hadn't even had that really intense time of revision where everyone improves so much don't feel held back by your gcse's and just take a levels as an opportunity to prove all of your teachers wrong and do so well so now for more subject focused advice i'd say definitely read ahead and if your schools give me some work, definitely do all of that, do more. So online there's loads of notes that you can use to just read through, summaries and YouTube videos like Primrose Kitten. So you can just like really just skim through all of those and make some light notes just so that you know what you're doing and you know you can kind of make that good first impression with your teachers. And reading ahead literally makes such a big difference. You're going to learn that half the stuff you learn is like completely irrelevant and overly simplified. So once you read ahead, you'll have like less shock in the lesson, you know, and you can kind of use the lesson as a reconsolidation time, make the most out of your lessons because you're going to have way less lessons than in GCSE. You're going to have free periods where you have time to do all of that learning. So you just need to be independent and in charge of your own time and what you're doing and just make the most of it. So with your free periods, this is like an absolutely crazy time, right? Because in GCSE, it was constant lessons, but now in A-level, you are literally like alone. For me, on one day, I had one lesson. So imagine I had to cycle all the way to school for one lesson, but <laughs> hopefully your timetable will be spread out better than that. One of the best pieces of advice is to use your free periods as independent study. Your free periods are not free. They're not for you to be going to McDonald's, going to like left and right, go to people's houses. It is really time for you to learn and you're getting so few hours of teaching compared to your GCSEs so you really need to use that time to work and you know for the first few months you know you can make friends and it's really easy to get used to just wasting all your free periods and just talking and it's so annoying especially as a year 13 when all the young people are just talking and enjoying their life and you're trying to study and you've got a test next period but yeah so don't do that what you should do is assign each of your free periods as to what you're going to do so on your timetable literally write down where you want to study and which subjects you want to study i will just hold you through the whole year so that you'll be organized and you know it's like when you have choices it's like oh i don't know what i'm going to do so might as well go here go there go talk to someone but towards the end of the year it's definitely so important to really dedicate yourself and use your free periods as study time because that would just make it so much easier for you and you know everyone's like oh yeah eight hours of study da, da, da. you can do that in your school day you know and then once you're at home you can chill out more you can do revision 
and just really make the most of your time you know, there's 24 hours in a day so you gotta use them efficiently in a levels you're going to be very independent as a student your teachers could have way more students than they had in secondary school your teachers have so much more work to mark your teachers have literally like such a bigger workload um, in some schools at least so your teachers are not going to be helping you as much as you would think your teachers won't care if you don't hand in your homework it's ruthless obviously they care but they don't have the time and resources to help you as much so i'd say go to all of the revision sessions go to all of the after school sessions one thing i kind of regret about sixth form was that I didn't really ask questions in certain subjects. You walk in there, everyone's got high grades to get in. Once you're behind, it's really easy to get stuck behind. So it's really important for you to remember that like half the people in your class, you're never gonna see ever again. And it doesn't matter what they think of you. You know, it literally doesn't matter what they think of you. So ask questions and just engage in the lesson. Don't be afraid to email teachers if you're too scared to ask them. Try to make friends with the older years if possible and perhaps, you know, get their tips and stuff. Um, I say join societies. Um, I actually started a K-pop society at my school, so that was a bit cringe, but it's just really fun to make friends, to have like that common interest break uh, during the day. So my final tip is be aware of university prep and for medicine it's really really important to get work experience and you know in the situation that's happening now um, there's definitely online experience that you can do for other subjects reading books making notes of those books so that when it comes to applying to university it literally comes so soon so you really need to be ready for that it can really creep up on you and then everyone's rushing to get work experience you can keep a log of things that you've done to help write your personal statement like so for me in year 12 i did stem award which is like duke of edinburgh but you like teach school children and stuff so that was really good and lots of other work experience opportunities i did not know about this but it's really important to apply for summer schools as well because sometimes they'll give you lower offers if you attended so definitely check out summer schools for the universities you're interested in so that's been all of my tips for all the upcoming year 12s and all the people going into sixth form for college uh sixth form college <laughs> but yeah i'm lee rebecca i make videos on medicine and studying and k-pop and lifestyle so i've got lots of good things coming up so thanks for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye